check out our sister podcast, Talk Murder to Me. Step into the captivating world of true crime with an unexpected twist of humor. With John's compelling narratives and Jen and Nicole's amazing banter, this podcast offers an entertaining and unique approach to crime storytelling. Talk Murder to Me can be found on any podcast platform, also streaming live Saturdays on YouTube. Welcome to the Dead Celeb Podcast, episode number two. We're going to talk about Chris Farley. Welcome to the Dead Celebs Podcast with your hosts, Brent Novak and Tana Satterley. Some exciting Chris Farley talk. What, uh, real, yeah. real quick before we get into it, what was, uh, it was, it was a fascinating story as well, too, wasn't it? Another tragedy, a uh, great star cut down in the prime of his life. And if you look yeah. at uh, our last week's episode was Nana and Nicole Smith. Mm -hmm. And this week's uh, Chris Farley, both of them had somebody that they idolized and they mm -hmm. both died around the same time frame, the same type of death. Very yes. interesting. Yeah. I thought that was a strange coincidence. Yeah. What we normally do in our first two episodes, recent death of celebrities. So now in our second episode, we are doing February, 2023. Oh, dang you. His name is Kyle Jacobs. He was a country music songwriter and producer Aww. and he started with his wife american idol standout kelly pickler in cmt reality Aww. series he died february 17th at age 49 he's found dead at the Aww. singer's house in nashville in apparent suicide oh so that's the yeah, worst bummer. i hate that I, I know richard belzer stand-up comedian and actor earned fame for his role john munch Mm -hmm. The TV homicides, Lunched. Life on the Street, and Law and Order SVU. Aww. Died February 19th at age 78. Burt Bacharach, pop composer, arranger, conductor, and producer known for creating hits as Walk On By, Do You Know the Way to San Jose, Elfie, I Say a Little Prayer for You, Aww. I'll Aww, Never Fall in song. Love Again, This Aww. Guy's in Love with You and more uh -huh. won many awards including oscars and grammys he died february 8th 2023 at the ripe old age though of 94 so he yeah, lived on for some reason he just looks like somebody else that but i think i do remember reading that he died um in my people magazine so but do you do I, you get people yeah. you get physical people magazine yet? yes i'm still no. old school what can i say okay. i love my people magazine Hmm. This lady died. Oh my goodness. My namesake, by the way. My really? middle name, Raquel Welch. My mom wanted me to have Raquel Welch's figure and not hers. Not that it works that way, of course, but right. that's what she was thinking. One of my favorite um, parts that she played in, probably because it was a recent, you know, for me, was Legally Blonde. She was the ex wife of the, the man who died. She was representing the young blonde that was married to the older man. And this is what Raquel played his ex-wife. Actress, model, and Hollywood sex symbol known for her work in movies <laughs> such as The Fantastic Voyage, One Million Years B.C., um, The Last Sheila, uh, and more, including uh, Legally Blonde. A Golden mm -hmm. Globe winner for The Three Musketeers. Welch also had many TV appearances. February 15th at age... Uh, how do you think? How old do you think she made it to? Late seventies, I thought. Eighty-two. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. 82. That's even better. <laughs> That's it. That's uh, February twenty twenty three's celebrity deaths. This is Brent. I want to talk to you about my other podcast I do with this guy, Dan. What's it about? More celebrity talk. Are they or were they ever a star? Good question. Dan and I will go into IMDb, check out their movies, check out their budget, when they were famous, when they weren't, when they flopped, all of it. All of it. Check it out. Are they or were they ever a star? Chris Farley was born February 15th, 1964, Madison, Wisconsin. He was uh, one of five children. He had three brothers, John, Kevin, and Tom, sister Barb. Mm -hmm. uh, his dad was Thomas Farley and his mom was Mary Ann Farley. And um, we mentioned these guys because they're a, a significant role in Chris's life. Well, they were very close, play pranks on each other. They liked watching the Carol Burnett show, Jackie Gleason, uh, the Muppets. Their ultimate goal was to make their dad laugh. So it sounds like they were 
close and they, they had a, a lot of fun together growing up. Here's a picture with his dad. Um, according to Tom Aww. Arnold in one of the documentaries, uh, Tom Farley senior, uh, was reaching 700 pounds at times. Oh, wow. So he's a big, big boy. Yeah. Uh, Chris decides to go to Marquette studies, crazy things like ballet. Uh, <laughs> you remember some of the things he, he studied? Yes. <laughs> I thought that was interesting that he took ballet uh, and dance mm. theater. He played rugby. He was very athletic. Here's a picture of Chris playing rugby, which obviously, you know, played well for him doing the physical comedy that he is so famous for the dancing on the Chippendales sketch with Patrick Swayze. I mean, that's, I mean, that's pretty impressive, you know, for a big guy, you know, or even for someone with no rhythm like me. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No, he, you can really see, you can really see he's got the chops. There's a, there's a story in one of the documentaries told about how, they were going to give a speech. I don't know if you remember this. And uh, he goes, I don't care what you do for your speech. You just have to drink a beer. So Chris crack up, cracks, yes. cracks up on a beer on, you know, in front of his class <laughs> and he takes a drink and he goes, don't worry, this is for the speech. And then he mm -hmm. throws it against, um, a, a, he, he slugs it down, throws mm -hmm. it against the wall and then yeah. walks out of the room and then comes back and his shirt's over his head. And he says, that's how you get attention by Chris Farley. So, yes. And wasn't he like up on a desk when he did that too? Yeah. Or, he was doing any, yeah, just, you're right. Crazy. Yeah. What a nut. <laughs> what a nut. I found this story very interesting too. They were sitting down to write comedy and all they could write mm -hmm. down is airplane food. Yes. And the two of them are like, oh my gosh, writing comedy is so hard. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's so hard. And uh, I guess Chris had ice. He had a he had a filing cabinet. And the bottom of the filing cabinet had ice in it. And the guy's like, it had no liner, just stacked with ice. And so it's got to melt if he doesn't drink it or use it, you know? Yes. And uh, they, had a, they had a couple drinks and they went out to party and then they came back and that's all they did all night was write down the word airplane food. Airplane so. food. <laughs> this is hard. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I can imagine. I, comedy is hard <laughs> to write. Comedy is hard. You know what else is? Doing a podcast is hard too. One of the stories too, they, they go into his old college, possibly frat house. And they talk to the guys and they said that uh, they were watching some Tommy Boy films or some Chris Farley stuff. And it felt like, doors were shutting and they were like, Oh my gosh. Is, yeah. Is the beds were money? shaking. Yeah. Right. right. Crazy. At the same time, kind of funny. Like I, I might laugh at that. I mean, I don't know if I were there, I'd probably be scared. <laughs> right. If it was just me, I'd definitely be scared. Like Chris. Don't. So we went down to Chicago to do some improv, um, mm -hmm. both at improv Olympics and second city he meets one of the co-owners of actually both co-owners of improv olympics uh, otherwise known, known as io charna helper uh charna helper was mm -hmm. one and the other one was del close and del close was actually jim belushi's mentor when mm -hmm. belushi was there yeah it was very interesting that um del close um i think in the documentary they said as soon as he saw him Chris Farley, he said, that's the next Jim Belushi and, or John Belushi. I keep saying Jim when I'm talking about him. It's John Belushi. And I mean, did I, how did I say poetic. Jim Belushi too? Did I say, I don't Jim know. Belushi too? It might've been me. It was me. Yeah, I think, I, think I may have too. I think that I noticed in the documentaries um, and everything that I've read about Chris Farley is as soon as somebody saw him, it was like, it was an instant he's got it. Like everyone who saw him, you know, knew it right away and like Del Close. And then later on at second city was when Lauren Michaels from Saturday night live discovered him. And I mean, it was pretty much immediate after that, that he was brought on the show from what I understand. It's like, he didn't even have to audition. He knew how to, how to work his comedy. That's for sure one of the co-founders, she, she said to him and she didn't like Chris at first. That's what I remember oh, yeah. her saying. Mm -hmm. He had too much energy. He's all over the place. And he just is begging her, begging her, begging her to go on stage. And mm -hmm. she goes, okay, 
and both both her and in a different documentary, Tom, her uh, Chris's brother says the same story. And she says, uh, if I'm going to allow you on stage and if you bomb, I'm never going to allow you on stage ever again. And mm-hmm. she goes, he, he nailed it. He was he, was he said, OK, let me on. <laughs> right. To Challenge have that, accepted. <laughs> right. To have yeah. that much confidence in mm-hmm. yourself. And I feel like Chris had more confidence earlier on. And then when he, when he became, as we'll see, he became old hat in a, in a little bit and it started to, to hit him. And I think that's when the drugs really mm. took over too. So Joel Murray, uh, Bill Murray's brother lives across mm. the street from him. Uh, they mm. hang out a lot together. So it's a, that helps when you're doing well and people are noticing you that Bill, I'm mm-hmm. sure has heard of him at this point too. Um, and knowing John Belushi and Bill Murray were so close, all these factors, I think it's got, you know, when, when you are in front of people and you're doing well, it's got to go fast and it's got to be, it's got to be overwhelming too, to many celebrities, not knowing how to handle the fame, the success, the, the chaos. And I'm sure the schedule prop too, you know, long days, long nights. Um, I don't know. It's, it's just very sad. It sounds to me like success is hard. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. (laughs) It's hard. So like you said, Chris then auditions, not auditions for Saturday Night Live. Uh, His first episode goes extremely well. Uh, The Chris Farley show is one of his skits. The motivational speaker where he's down by the van by the river, which everybody knows that grew up in that time frame, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Matt Foley. (laughs) Matt Foley, yeah. I didn't watch a lot of Saturday Night Live, though. I probably only remember seeing these sketches like years later. Um, right. But of course I remember Tommy boy, some of his other movies. I thought when he was doing that skit, when I first saw it, there was no lack of believing in yourself. You're just going to do, but here's a, he's like, Oh, mm-hmm. they're laughing at fatty again. And as much as that s- sacrifice for laugh was there, it took away a piece of you every time. Yeah, it had to Chris rock said that he didn't like that sketch. It just didn't do anything good for Chris's, you know, emotional well-being, making fun of the fat guy all the time. I can see how that would wear on you after a while. I mean, as much as, like you said, he wanted to sacrifice for the laugh and he would, he'd do anything for the laugh. I think that got to be too much. Well, and Al Franken, uh, this end up being a, a senator or congressman, I believe senator from Minnesota, was a writer on Saturday Night Live. He comes up with a skit called The Relapse Guy, which yes. is dark and sick, but also funny. Like when I saw it as a kid or a young adult, I didn't, I'm like, that's funny because he's one second, he's okay. And the next second he's just hammered and wasted. But here they're basing it on where they see Chris actually exactly his real life yeah Yeah. his real life really dark again (laughs) sacrificing sacrificing your inner self for Mm -hmm. success it looked like chris also had a little ocd and this i did not know about him intro to saturday night live and they're coming out and he's behind steve martin and he's touching Mm -hmm. every single picture on the wall honestly i would think that's kind of funny him coming out and touching like Unless you knew that about him, you may not think that that was like, oh, that's a problem or that's a OCD right. thing. <laughs> right. And, and I've never seen him in character do anything like that. But I guess that was sort of in character, but it was the only time that I would have even mm-hmm. noticed that they did. They did point that out. But I guess he would lick things. Yeah. And that was, was very, yeah. that was very odd. I didn't realize that, that he, he did that. Melanie Hutzels has a story where they are doing an episode and it's Monday morning and it's the read through and her and David Spade are there and Chris Farley's not every, everybody else is there. They said, let's take an hour. They're kind of waiting for Chris or stalling, you know? So her and David Spade say, let's go down to McDonald's, which is on the bottom floor of this building that they're in at Saturday night live. And as they're coming down, Chris is at the bottom and he's hammered mm-hmm. and they're like, they run into him on the elevator and they don't know. And he's slow. He, He's groggy and it looks like heroin, according to mm-hmm. Melanie. Melanie was the character on Saturday Night Live that, light, night live that played Jan Brady. So mm-hmm. if you're, Marsha, 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 she did that. So trying to sneak him in 
to his office, which is an odd thing to do. So they actually go up to the office where everybody is looking at him. They can't sneak him out of the elevator. So David Spade presses a different floor. And on that next floor, it's Lauren Michaels. Again, mm -hmm. Chris is so disheveled. This is the first time that she saw Lauren Michaels become not their boss, but a father figure. Chris is like, I'm so sorry, boss. I'm so sorry. Don't fire me. And they did suspend Chris. Because of that, he was sober for for three years. You know, that was interesting that you say he was suspended because I, I kind of got lost after watching both documentaries, doing some more reading. It seemed like it was never really clear. Did he quit? Did he get fired? Did he get laid off? Did he get suspended? Um, one of the theories was that SNL wasn't doing well and they wanted to revamp. So they basically didn't fire everyone. They just didn't ask them back. Right. So, that, well, he got, he got suspended before that. And then he comes that. out. And, okay. Yes. Okay. So he come, they, then they decide to do Tommy boy. Tommy boy does pretty well. So as they're filming Tommy boy, if you remember, they're, they're working every day and it's just, it's mm. wearing them out. And this ends up being yeah. Tommy boy is actually the top 10 home video rentals ever for Paramount. So I mean, not, not that there's any movies rented now, but, but a lot of that cast was actually not let back. This includes Spade, Sandler. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of them did come back, which is looking back at that cast, that mm -hmm. that show struggled during cast, that cast. I don't think it was the cast fault, was it? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. That was a great cast. Yeah. All of them are stars today, just about. Because of how long SNL had been on the air and- People were getting tired of it, maybe. And I don't think it was the cast. Well, and who knows, too. We're talking about mid-90s where channels were popping up all over the place. You True. go into the 80s and early 90s, like there's mm -hmm. barely any TV channels. And now it's like, here comes TNT and TBS. And, you know, yeah. now you just have more options at night. Sobriety is his three years off um tom arnold takes him under his wing and those two become mm -hmm. very close so mm -hmm. and black black sheep flops it does not do well mm -hmm. it was either siskel or ebert and he just says chris farley you're not funny chris farley is not john belushi i knew john belushi i knew john candy and you mm -hmm. are neither of those two people and that's sad i don't agree with that <laughs> well it it's Hollywood though. They're so cutthroat. Yeah. They're so, They're cutthroat. so brutal. It's so brutal to associate that with a quick story I had. I was, when I lived in Los Angeles, I was a limo driver for six weeks and I took some Seattle supersonics at the time. It was a basketball team, pro basketball team, and they wanted to go to a club and it was before GPS. I couldn't find my way around. I had oh, no, no idea where I was. And one of the basketball <laughs> players lowered the window and he blankety blank, blank, blank me. And um, he was yelling at me and screaming. I cried, but they didn't see it. And one of the guys oh. said to me or said, he goes, lay off, man. He's just, a, you know, he's just a limo driver. And he goes, I don't care if I have a bad night. Everybody's on my case for do doing my job. This guy needs to do a, do a job, you know. After Black Sheep, Chris goes back to drinking. Do you have anything you want to talk about with Tommy Boy or Black Sheep? No, I did rewatch Tommy Boy last night just to refresh my memory. Um, right. And my husband watched it with me. He made a really good point. It stands the test of time. Like, it's still funny. And it was almost 20 years ago. You know how some what? old movies you're like, gosh, that was really silly or whatever, you know? <laughs> but no, this was... right. It was great. Here And here's something that's probably going to make you a little upset. It's actually uh -oh. been 25, 25 years. They just had their no. 25th anniversary. Am I yes. doing my math wrong? 1995. Yes. Okay. Isn't that 25 years? I'm having my 30th okay. class reunion right now. Yes. So mm -hmm. it's actually 28 years. Uh, okay. Um, it's almost 30 is what I meant in my it's head. It's almost 30. Yes. Time mm. flies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the interview with Gary Busey that they had? Oh my I'm goodness. Gary Busey. He is something else, right? He, he just seemed like he was a little bit out of it. <laughs> and what did you notice him? the shoes he was wearing? They were like crocheted, like slippers, but they looked like shoes. Like they had laces, but they were all crocheted no, on his feet. I wish I yeah. would have. Oh my God. He's, he just stopped mid sentence. He's like, I think Chris's spirit's here right now. Yes. He was really like into it too. Totally believed yeah. it. If you get a chance, he was on Trump had Celebrity Apprentice. He was 
Gary Busey is very entertaining on there. Tommy boy. Um, I thought was very um, impressive is that he did his own stunts. Yes. And he he's even credited like on his IMDB under his credits under stunts for Tommy boy. So I think it had a $20 million budget and made 38 million where it's like, that would be a failure today. But I I guess Mm. that was a a hit in black sheep does not do well is not get good Mm. reviews. The next step for Mr. Chris Farley is Beverly Hills ninja his co-star to the left. uh, I do Mm -hmm. not have his name. He had a, a crazy story, right? Yes. And, I don't know why he kept going on about this. It wasn't that crazy to me. The co-star comes into Chris Farley's trailer and sees this gigantic bowl of M&Ms. Like he goes on in detail to describe it looks like a big, clear crystal punch bowl. And it's just filled with M&Ms. And he was just in awe, like in disbelief that someone would have such a huge bowl of M&Ms in their trailer like that. I, I don't know. I, the way he kept going on and on about it, I made a note because I thought that was so funny. Chris Farley is, is kind of losing momentum. And mm-hmm. to be honest, I can kind of see it because I think he's a lovable, adorable guy, but it's almost the Will Ferrell effect too, where you, you mm-hmm. kind of see the same shtick over and over and over. And it, it really, yeah. it really can disappear quickly. One of the things someone said about Chris Farley was he got tired of making movies and making movies is completely different than doing improv or, or doing television. You're shut off from everyone until you're ready to do your thing. And whereas improv, you're on stage, you're with people. That's, I think that's why I love theater so much is the live energy you get with your co-stars and the audience and, and it's all just happening right then and there. I think that for Chris Farley, not having that audience and that immediate, you know, response. And he probably, like you said, he just got tired of it and, and the same old stick. Yeah. But he had some things in the hopper after Beverly Hills Ninja. He mm-hmm. was supposed to play Fatty Arbuckle yeah. in a bio, which I think he mm-hmm. would have been amazing at. I really think that would have turned his career around had he survived. Yeah. That one mm-hmm. more so than even doing Shrek even doing and he was he was supposed to do cable guy too expound on the shrek thing the writers originally had chris farley and david spade in mind for the ogre and the donkey and right. no disrespect to david spade but i think eddie murphy blew it out of the water with the donkey because he's hysterical i don't know i think chris farley would have been great as the ogre but unfortunately he he didn't make it so yeah i agree with you too i think the way it worked out you have a better film today yeah. shrek is better because of it it's yeah. a, it's subjective right <laughs> totally is subjective yeah so chris is is drinking and doing a lot of drugs he goes to an opening in indianapolis of planet hollywood and just mm-hmm. makes an ass out of himself overall drunken debacle and he starts telling friends that he's fantasizing about dying like john belushi is we're getting closer and closer to that time frame. I think we're yeah. you know roughly 90, 95 ish, 90, 96, 96, you know, yeah. one of his last things two to three weeks before he does pass away is he goes back to host Saturday night mm-hmm. live. And um, it sounds like Lauren Michaels is trying to get him back in the studio. He can just be part of the crew, get him, get him grounded. It didn't turn out so well. They talked about that last, that week leading up to the show before they recorded how they wrote everything out. Um, midweek, they could already tell that he was not up for this, but it was too late because they had already written everything. They'd already built the set. They'd already had everything in place. And there was no turning back. It just, it, it was already expected not to turn out well. They break down that, that week of SNL. And by Wednesday, he's partying with his, mm-hmm. sort of partying with his brother, but his, he was, he's bringing his brother back to the studio and he picks up two girls mm-hmm. and the assistant and they ride in this limo. And this is Wednesday and this show is filming on Saturday. And he's just mm-hmm. randomly bringing two girls to party in. Talk about just falling unprofessionally on his face. Yeah. Just doing some crazy stuff. 
Yeah, he wasn't handling his professional life very well. He was never married. And as far as I could tell, there was never any noticeable mention of of a girlfriend or somebody serious or, or anybody, any kind of relationship other than, you know, random girls. And that's kind of sad. And, and it's not like there was any mention of him being gay or any, and not that there's anything wrong with that, but, you know, like no women, no men, no, you know. It sounded like he had a lot of flings. Like he was, he yeah. messed around with a lot of girls, never really got serious with anybody. I don't know if some of these co-hosts and friends were associated with them, but. Because a, a few of those women in the documentaries, I, I really tried watching kind of how they were talking about him to see if, well, but it really did seem platonic. I mean, yeah. There was one girl in one of the documentaries where she was sober and he came up to her and said, I, I met you and you weren't drinking. And she goes, well, I'm sober. And he's like, I am too. And so the two of oh, them yeah. hung out, hung out for a little bit. And she goes, it was really hard when you're having sparkling water and somebody buys a bottle of champagne and brings it yeah. to your table. And, and Chris goes to the bathroom and somebody offers him some Coke. And, you know, I, I saw David Spade in LA sitting by himself. And this was when I was stone cold broken in my mid twenties. So I didn't really think about it, but, and I think he was probably trying to be sober at the time, but part of me is like, well, he's sitting by himself. Should I buy him a drink? You know, should I say, Hey David, I love your work. Here, mm -hmm. drink. You know, I don't know. Do they want to be bothered? Do they not want to be bothered? It all, it all depends. Like there was a time I sat outside was, I was with some friends who were smoking and Sean Penn came out and s started smoking and you could literally tell we, we were just too scared that he was open to talking to us. His Aww. body language was towards us. You know, we, um, yeah. when, I, when we all first saw him, we're like, Hey, you know, and he just kind of <laughs> gave us a smile and, but he was, he never walked away from us. He was close and mm -hmm. just never, so you don't, how do you approach them? Well, you know? I think you, I think you said it, the body language. I think yeah. that if someone is, is open and they're smiling, they make eye contact with you. That's probably a good opening, but if they're maybe looking down, they don't want to, you know, look you in the eye. Maybe, maybe that's not a good time. looks like December 18th is mm -hmm. uh, we're going to, we're going to go right into Chris's death and talk a little bit about his funeral. Mm -hmm. uh, December 18th, he has found by his brother, John, mm -hmm. in his Chicago apartment, dead from apparent speedball. He dies same age as John Belushi, 33, yeah. same way. And this, yeah. just what I meant earlier, this mirrors Anna Nicole Smith a lot. Yeah. And it's crazy. It is crazy. You know, had idols that they looked up to, mimicked, and they both ended up dying in the almost exact same way and even almost the exact same age as those idols. And here's yeah. what's interesting too. This is one of the last pictures of Chris alive. Uh, her name is Heidi. I couldn't find her last name. I really didn't look that hard, but she was a prostitute and the two of them partied through the night. According to the National Enquirer, she was with Chris. He, he did ask her not to leave, but he was breathing and conscious when she left and she was the last person to see him alive. His brother, John found him and they're, if you want to search the internet, I found pictures of his body with his shirt off, but it was a little rough. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to see that. You can use your imagination listeners. <laughs> yes. Or if you're really crazy. Or if you're watching. Yeah. Go yeah. look if you're really crazy. It's exactly. So that's kind of it. His, uh, his funeral in Wisconsin is a big deal, especially mm -hmm. coming from the Midwest. Like I have, and especially something like that where so many celebrities it was either Tom Arnold or John Goodman in one of those documentaries, literally got off the plane, got in the taxi, had his bags, and he he gets out of the car and he goes into the funeral with his bags because he's yep. literally, because he's almost late. Yep. Do you remember which one it was? It was uh, John Goodman. Norm from Cheers. I, I forgot his yeah. real name. Dan uh, Aykroyd. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, uh, it's really sad and, and interesting that the two, the first two people that we went through, Mm -hmm. Both idolized somebody that passed away and died the same way, close to the same age. That's well, the life and death of Chris Farley. He was never credited for a small role in Billy Madison with Adam Sandler, fellow castmate of SNL and friend. Mm -hmm. He was like a bus driver and he was funny. I remember him in that movie. And when we were going through all of his list of movies, I was like, why don't they list that? And when I went to his IMDb page, it says uncredited. And I'm thinking, why? Because he was great. Sometimes they, they do that for like an Easter egg. 
oh, boom, there's Chris Farley. Let's see if you recognize him. Yeah. You know? Oh, I for yeah. sure did. I, I mean, yeah. I remember that movie, him in that movie, more than I would remember Black Sheep or Beverly Hills Ninja. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh... Chris Farley's only hit is, I mean, he doesn't live that long anyway, but it's, it's Tommy Boy. And that's Tommy Boy. Of, yeah. yeah. And he's also in Dirty Work. Mm -hmm. He's also in Coneheads. He's also, that's so right. He does have uh, um, the movie credits, just not the star. Chris Farley. One more thing. I, I I didn't get to put this in there. Even after 17 stints in rehab, Chris Farley could not outrun his demons. Wow. And I mean, I almost feel like, is that real? Like, is that a misprint? Like 17? I just, oh my goodness. He actually named his character Matt Foley after a priest from a church in his hometown. A church in his hometown in which he actually generously donated to and volunteered at. So actually a very generous person. And, and several people mentioned that in the documentary. Um, he, he was often described as an extremely kind and generous man who often went out of his way to help people in need. And this was my, my wrapping up. Right. The death of Chris Farley shows that fame can have a harmful effect on anyone it touches. For him, the need to please proved to be too much. Hmm. You have a, you have nice quotes at the end of each one. Where did, you, where, did you, where did you find that one? You know, I think that one was an article, funny enough, that was just published like last month. Well, that's it. Tiana, let's talk about where everyone can find us. Uh, the website is www.deadcelebsdead-celebs.com. Your email is... Tana, that's spelled T-A-N-A, -A, at dead-celebs.com. My email is brent at dead-celebs.com. And we'd love to hear from you. Who do you want us to cover? Who do you want us to talk about? Yeah. Is there anybody else that is connected to mm. their idol? That's, that's what I'm interested in. Yes. Thank you, Tana. I appreciate your yes. time. Yes. Thank you, Brent. This was fun. Uh, it was fun. Have a great night. Thanks, everybody. Take care. For a legal disclaimer, please visit www.dead-celebs.com. The Actor Factor brings the industry knowledge to you firsthand from professionals, including working actors, directors, managers, and more. Find it anywhere podcasts are streamed. If you're thinking about suicide or worried about a friend or loved one, would like emotional support, the Suicide Lifeline Network is available 24-7 across the United States. It's free and confidential. Just dial 988.